Our last set of notes for this unit covers how the Americans were able to win. You know, certainly at the start of the war, the British were the heavy, heavy favorites. Um, strongest army, strongest navy in the world. The Americans, just sort of a ragtag group of militiamen, you know, farmers and blacksmiths and masons who were trying to stand up to the might of the British Empire. Um, but yet we know the Americans do win, so this set of notes is going to kind of bring the unit together by examining how that happened. And we're going to start by taking a look at what the advantages and disadvantages were for each side. Starting with the Americans. A major advantage was that the Americans were the home team. They were fighting on their home soil, so they knew the land better and they were much closer to the supplies that they needed. The Americans also had plenty of raw materials um, readily available. Disadvantages for the Americans. There are a lot. Only about a third of the colonists, 40%, um, actually supported the fight for independence. So that meant most people either did not support it or were moderates. They were in the middle. The Americans at the start of the war did not have an army and did not have a navy. The Americans had very little money to buy the supplies that they would need. There was very little industry in America. Um, we didn't have the factories and, and the, the production capabilities that the British had. The 13 colonies um, were very new at working together, so they did not really yet fully trust each other. Um, so this is really the first time that they're having to, to work together uh, for a common cause. And so there's, there's that issue of some mistrust going on. And Congress didn't have a lot of power. It could not force the colonies to contribute men to the army. It could not force the colonies to contribute money. And it, it couldn't even force the colonies to work together. So if a colony said, I don't want to do this, Congress didn't really have the power to make them. So a lot of disadvantages for the Americans throughout the war. The British, what were the advantages the British had? Well, probably the most obvious advantage is they had the strongest military in the world, the top army, the top navy in the world. Great Britain had a lot of money and a lot of industry, so they could make a lot of guns and make a lot of tools and clothing. And there were also about a third of the colonists who were supportive of Britain, these loyalists who wanted to stay part of the British Empire. So those folks would be willing to help out the British Army, maybe give them things that they need, or pass along information. The British did have some disadvantages too, though. For example, a lot of folks back home in Britain supported the colonists, right? So you had some people back home that felt Britain should not be waging war on the colonies. It's a long way to England. So you have to go all the way across an ocean. That's going to impact how quickly they can get supplies, and how quickly they can communicate back and forth. And in the past, Britain had angered some, some rivals who could be persuaded to help the colonists, like France. Right? France was mad at England and was waiting for a chance for revenge. So how did the Americans overcome these long odds? How did they manage to actually overcome those disadvantages and defeat the strongest military in the world. Well, we're going to look at this in two ways. First, by taking a look at what helped the Americans to win. An important point was that George Washington and his other generals on the American side really improved during the war. Right, the beginning of the war Washington was making a lot of mistakes. 
and so were his other generals, and they learned from those mistakes. They got better. And by the end of the war, they weren't making those mistakes anymore. Washington proved better at getting his troops from point A to point B more quickly than the British were. And this helped out massively at Yorktown, where Washington was able to quickly move his troops and trap the British army at Yorktown. Obviously, the French helped us out hugely. When the French came into the war after the Battle of Saratoga, that gave us crucial, crucial assistance. They gave us troops and, and supplies and money, and their navy helped us to trap the British Army at Yorktown as well. And the Americans were smart. They knew that they weren't always going to be able to go fight against the British in the open field. So they used things like guerrilla warfare, where they would hide and um, would, would ambush British troops rather than fight them in the open field. And other tactics, like Washington's tactic of being very defensive and retreating frequently, that helped the Americans to avoid um, just getting crushed, especially early in the war. Now, the flip side of this is, is what hurt the British? Well, we talked about how the American generals improved, but the British generals really didn't. They kind of stayed at the same level they were at. So they were certainly better at the beginning of the war, but the American generals got better. The British generals sort of stayed the same. They ran into some major communication problems. And that hurt their efforts, especially at Saratoga, the battle where you were supposed to have three British armies show up together. They didn't communicate very well, and only one of them showed up and ended up getting captured. Britain had the huge task of trying to supply a huge, huge army. That's hard when you've got you know, 20,000, 30,000 soldiers that you're trying to supply. And so even though Britain's got a lot of money, that's a difficult task. It created a very big problem for the British. As we mentioned earlier, Britain was really far away. So when you needed to get information to England, um, or you needed to get supplies from England, it took two months to cross the ocean. And lastly, Another reason that the British were hurt was the war was just not popular in Britain. And the longer it raged on, the more and more unpopular it became. Right? More and more people were speaking up saying, why are we still fighting? We're wasting men. We're wasting money. We need to end the war and just let America be independent. So this is a very simplified explanation of, of how the Americans were able to pull it off, but it gets the basics across, right? That the Americans um, used their advantages really well. They were able to take advantage of the problems that Britain had um, and just keep fighting long enough that eventually, when Washington captures the British at Yorktown, the king and parliament say, enough's enough. We need to sign a peace treaty and let America have its independence.